Hello and welcome to Pixelated Realms Games Cast, your guide through the digital landscape, untangling the mysteries of your favorite titles and discussing the latest and greatest in video game fun. I'm your host, Alex Lerno. Alongside me is my brother, Tyler, and my good friend, Dustin. What's up, guys? Hi. What Hello, up, everyone? Up. Welcome back. Another great episode today. And uh, I am going to apologize ahead of time. So my mic might sound kind of crappy. It has been for the last few episodes, and I'm going to apologize for that. It is not my fault. Um, the app that we use to record is compressing my audio and screwing it all up. And I'm trying to figure out how to prevent that from happening. But if it's happening, I'm sorry. It's not on purpose. We know it's happening. We we'll just have to get Alex over it. Alex has shit equipment. Don't listen to him. Tyler shit isn't bad equipment. at his audio I have job. the best equipment out of all of us. <laughs> and yet it's <laughs> behaving the worst. And that's, that's, that's frustrating. Alex is big sad. Big sad. Big sad. Uh, yeah. So before we really dive into stuff, um, a little bit of housekeeping. So we're going to try and formalize our, our format a little bit more as well as, um, drop more short form content. We did talk about this last episode, so expect to see that more often. We're going to try and do more segments, more diverse segments, both short and long and kind of medium. Um, our podcast is still kind of our capstone, uh, you know, source of content, but we're going to, we're going to have more. We're also going to be formalizing our podcast just a slight bit. So now the format is going to be, um, obviously, we're going to do our, our housekeeping like we're doing now. Then we're going to change what used to be called What Are You Playing into kind of more of a weekly roundup, which is a open discussion between the three of us on any topics that we like, including games we are currently playing, games that we're anticipating to play, or just news in general. Then we're going to talk about uh, we're going to ask a question. We're going to pose a question, and the three of us are going to discuss it together. Um, that is going to be drawn from our pixelatedrealms.org slash ask. If they're available, we'll pick a few select questions from there, and we will discuss them. So please write in. Um, again, that's pixelatedrealms.org slash ask ask, and you can write in and ask us a question or a comment, and we'll talk about it in the show. And then after that, we will discuss kind of more of a deeper dive topic for a short period of time. Um, kind of more of the meat of the show. So, we'll, like for instance, today we are going to talk about video games that we have played that we not that have not finished, but that are big games, big series games. So, um, look forward to that. We have a lot coming on. Um, so, you know, let's go ahead and dive right into the weekly roundup. So, what are you guys doing? What's up? <clears throat> um, Tyler, do you want to start us off? Sure. Um. You know, there's been a lot happening. My Warhammer 40k obsession continues. My hyperfixation continues, as anyone who's been listening week by week um, knows. Uh, I'm not hiding it. I'm not. I'm not ashamed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> ashamed. Maybe uh, just financially ashamed. Maybe yeah. Maybe just like financially, it's not great. But um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm doing good. I've been playing a lot of uh, Warhammer Rogue Trader. Uh, it's a video game that is. Just to to cut to the chase, it's very like a Baldur's Gate 3 CRPG style um, Warhammer game. Um, I got to I got to just say once again, and I believe I said this last week, it's really, really good. If you like CRPGs, narrative based uh, turn based combat with a great narrative gameplay, um, really, uh, really recommend you pick up 40,000 uh, Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader. Even if you're not a fan of the Warhammer universe, you'll learn. Um, and, uh, and yeah, um, the other thing I wanted to call out, um, and maybe we'll make this into a little segment ourselves is, uh, looks like there's a big old sale on steam right now. Um, frontier publishing, uh, has a sale up, up to 90%, um, frontier. If you're not familiar with frontier publishing, um, they've published and, uh, they publish such games as Planet Zoo, Planet Coaster, uh, Jurassic World Evolution, both one and two. A lot of good Sims. Uh, yeah, a lot of really good. I personally love their Sims. Um, I I enjoyed the Jurassic World ones. They also do um, F1 Manager 2023, which I know had a tempestuous start, but I'm sure it's a pretty decent game. And funny enough, they also do Warhammer Chaos Gate Demon Hunters. So I picked that one up for myself, which is an XCOM style turn-based shooter game um so yeah that's kind of what i've been up to lately how about you dustin you know i didn't do too much this week honestly 
but I did get a chance to finish the demo for Stellar Blade. You know, like I talked about this a little bit last week. You know, I was pretty disappointed with the combat, but obviously loved the design. The world is very cool. And then I didn't realize it actually. So in the demo, you enter like this garage and they're kind of like, why is there like a, a base camp in this fucking parking garage? Like that's so random. And like, they're, they're literally talking about it between the two characters and uh, they're like, Oh, this must be a really important location. So like, I was like, okay, I'm going to like stop here for the night, whatever safe point. And then not realizing that you literally go up the stairs and you fight the, the final boss of the demo. <laughs> so I log in and I go up and like the boss just like beat the shit out of me continuously um i probably took me like 20 ish tries to beat it but the good thing about that was be up until then like yeah you could almost like just slash your way through most of the enemies like you die a couple times you know, oh i gotta learn how to dodge this way or that way like that fight actually made me learn how to do more attacks and like actually start like forcing me to like learn the parry and try to get actually better at the dodge. And, yeah yeah get better at the dodge and instead of just like trying to dodge i was at, there's like a move that he does that you basically can't dodge just by dodging like you have to run or sprint so learning like then to sprint away from that attack to have enough time to get out of the blast zone and i was like okay like I was bitching about the combat last week and like this has been a better experience because now it's forced me to learn and I'm picking things up. I did see something in the news that there's a little bit of input lag on the, the PlayStation mm -hmm. 5 for the game, which is was what was my big gripe last week that I felt like when I was you hitting the button. can't have input lag on a game like that. Yeah, you know, like that that was my, my, my thing last week, right? That like it didn't feel like it was reacting fast enough to what I was trying to do. So it seems like that is an actual problem. But, you know, it's a demo. The game comes out on April 26th. So there's lots of times for something like that, I think, hopefully enough time for them to fix it. But, um, but no, like a much better combat experience after doing that boss fight that makes me more excited to play through the game. Um, I have a so, question. Yeah. So um, I have played and beat, both Alex and I have played and beat Final Fantasy 16. In Final Fantasy 16, it is a similar, uh, somewhat similar battle system. And they actually have the thing, what you said is it, one of the dodging mechanics is in the game. So a lot of things you can dodge, but in Final Fantasy 16, there's these area of effect um, powers that come out and you do have to sprint out of them at a very small margin. It sounds almost identical to what you described in Stellar Blade. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I've never played Final Fantasy 16. Uh, we'll talk about that later on in, in the podcast. But um, but yeah, almost identical, or it sounds very much identical, um, where, yeah, you can dodge, you can perfect dodge, which then gives you an ability to do, like, a counterattack. Yeah. And then there's moves like that where, like, he um, either throws fire at you or he does, like, this jump in the air, like, landing attack that has, like, a blast radius around it. And if you're not sprinting, then it's very difficult to get out of it. And the other tricky part about that is too, is you kind of have to learn like um, his mannerisms, I guess a little bit yep. because Eve fights up close. Right. So like you want to be like, Oh shit, he's going to do that soon. So then you start backing away and it gives you time to sprint. But if like, you're not paying attention to his move set and you're like upfront and personal, like, I don't give a fuck if you sprint or not. Like you're not getting out of that, out of that range. Hmm. So did you but, yeah, play Sekiro? Like no. Okay. I was going to say, because I'm curious how close it is to Sekiro. I saw some comparisons being drawn online about the two games. I got to say no game. I, I, I am, I can kind of confidently say that I don't think I have ever paid attention to my enemy frame data as <laughs> much as I have playing Sekiro and I play fighting games. And so it's like, <laughs> It, it, that's what it sounds i'm really hoping stellar blade does offer that up because when i was playing the hardest bosses in sekiro i mean it is i'm literally watching the limb movement of the enemy because that's going to tell you whether you're dodge parrying running you know and and i thought that was so impressive and i i loved that the game respected my uh brain power right it didn't it wasn't in no way was it like no we're not giving this to you for free like you have to earn it um and so yeah if stellar blade is going down that path that's really exciting uh to me um hopefully i'm not overhyping myself though no no i mean i think i i 
I've seen a lot of people talking about that comparison too, and I can't say for sure, obviously, but I've seen people say that Sekiro is harder than any Souls or Bloodborne game. So yeah, it's very, I have very a hard. It is hard time believing that they're going to make Starblade that difficult. Uh, maybe once you beat the first way through, I heard it unlocks a harder difficulty, so maybe that will be extremely challenging. But I will say that as I was playing that boss, he does like this attack with both arms where he swings at you with one and swings at the other. Like that was a parry, right? But then like as you finish an attack, he would come over the top with like a double sword or like double attack. That was like very difficult to parry. And I felt like I was trying to like perfect dodge that more and then mm-hmm. go in as for a counter. And then, yeah, then like figuring out like when he like points to the sky, like, oh shit, he's charging up and he's about to like do the bigger attack run away so yeah definitely like paying attention and figuring out is this a parry is this a dodge is this a sprint um so i think if like you like that then this game is setting up well for that at least in the boss encounters yeah i mean to me i love that kind of like duelist right you're like in this duel with this boss and you need to it's a dance and you need to Mm -hmm. read their dance movements and uh uh, kind of adjust accordingly the the last game we played uh a lot that kind of did have that i'm gonna say is actually remnant uh two um because in the the final boss if you ever got to the final boss of that game um one of the more well-designed final bosses i think i've ever uh faced in a game and it's incredibly hard but every single move has a tell and you can you learn those tells and like i said it's a dance you're like okay step to the left shoot step to the right shoot going into phase two shit something's coming over my head duck um so to me i i love that when it's done well i think that's to me that's what the hack and those hack and slash type of games where they thrive um although i was just talking about a shooting game but it doesn't matter either way it doesn't matter what type of game if you can create that kind of like call and response uh esque duel while still presenting a challenge that sounds really interesting what was cool too is like um and then we'll move on in a second but like um you start like figuring out like how well you're doing through like that attempt right like so like when i was doing i was like okay i have to get through phase one without taking damage because i only get three potions and i don't get through phase one without taking fucking damage there's no way i'm gonna get through, through this boss and um i actually got really lucky uh, when I finally beat him, because I got him down like really low a couple times, and like you, know, you get him like like you know that boss like ten percent, you're like fuck, kill it, kill it, kill it. You, the 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 you nerves, know? like, and you're like, yeah, and it's like, so fun. Yeah, I died both times, and I was like, motherfucker, dude. And then there was one time actually where I was sprinting away from him, and he did that like jump attack, and he just happened to land right in the middle of barrels that I didn't know could explode and do damage. So he landed in these barrels, they all exploded and took like a third of his health far down. And I was in phase two, and I was like, oh shit, I got three potions, and he's already at 30%. Fuck him up. So um, yeah, I was able to take him down on that attempt, but I was like, oh dude, like saving grace, because like it was really starting to piss me off. But um, but yeah, no, um, really uh, cool boss experience. I, you guys should definitely download and check it out. I mean, it's only maybe like an hour max to okay. get to that mm-hmm. point, so it's not a, like a very long demo. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Great, Alex. What have you been up to? Let's see. Um, so I also haven't been play- like been playing a ton this week. Um, I have been also painting my Warhammer um, characters, which Tyler has pulled me into. And so I can blame him for all my financial mistakes. But um, I also been, I've been, yeah, <laughs> it is fun. Um, but play, been playing Dragon's Dogma still. And I actually have to say, like, I really like the class system in that game and the, the vocations and stuff like that. So I've been enjoying that. Like, the, you can switch your, your vocations. And it's that style of kind of like Final Fantasy Tactics where it's like, you have to level up this one, and then you level up that one, and then it unlocks like a third one. And I really so like what that. What have you level? What have you been leveling up? What have you been finding is cool? Um, I just I, I'm pretty basic right now. So I have a uh, you can only I think it's ten levels per uh, vocation, or maybe it's less than that. Maybe it's like nine. But um, I maxed out fighter. You know the most 
vanilla of them, but I just kind of wanted to start basic. After, you know, once I figured out that I could change them, I was like, oh, I'm just going to kind of go down the list. Yeah. So I started with fighter. Now I'm doing archer and the archer is like super power overpowered a little bit. Really? In my opinion. I was yeah. having a trouble in the beginning of the game with archer in the, in the beginning, but once you start to unlock some of their stuff and then eventually, eventually when you max out archer, you get another one that's like a magic archer. And apparently it's like broken. Um, I haven't gotten that far yet, but I guess it's like, you could just like you could shoot like 15 arrows into a guy and then they all explode or something and so i was just like okay of course the you know the sneaky ranger is the best in every fucking game but um anyways but i've been really enjoying that um i still not super into the pawn system it seems kind of goofy to me but uh i like the idea i like the vision behind it so yeah. um not not mad there um a few things that have been kind of come out in the news lately though um Hell Blade 2 got a release date. It's yeah. uh, late May. I think it's, let me look it up. Oh, I have it open. It's May 21st. And uh, I'm excited for that. So that's a Ninja Theory game. I played the first one, really liked it. It's like a really dark, intense single player game uh, during this like Viking era. And the first Focuses game is around like mental health, right? And like the struggles like mental, with yeah. insanity. So yeah. Your character is like, basically schizophrenic and so you hear voices like the whole time and so i'm really excited to see the second game like i really loved the first one and i i played it this year so it's still really fresh in my mind so i'm excited to see this one come out i mean i'm definitely going to get a day one and, and play through it so that's going to be cool um also i guess the star wars outlaws is coming with a trail oh. a story trailer drop sometime this week or next week so really excited so i'm putting a lot of faith in that game for this year uh, there's not a lot of really big games this year. It's like maybe an Assassin's Creed game if you like those. Um, trying to think of like some of the other ones, but I this mean, is one we of have the a bigger special place in our heart for Star Wars. So it's going to be really. Hard. It's very hard for them to mess up a Star Wars game so bad. I don't like it, <laughs> but it's happened. <laughs> so I I I don't think that's going to happen with this. But you know I'm. I also don't think this is going to be like a Jedi Survivor where it's going to come out. It's not going to be GTA 6. No, it's definitely not going to be GTA 6. I mean, nothing is going to be GTA 6. But uh, I'm excited to see. I mean, more info is always good. And I'm really, they haven't had a release date yet. So I'm hoping they drop a release date with this one as well. I'm hoping they take their time. Yeah, right. And like, they're following a formula that works for them. You know, like you said, mm-hmm. it's going to be like Assassin's Creed to a certain extent. Like, we already saw some of the, the uh, some of the gameplay, like, it has like that kind of vibe for me, like, in terms of like, it looks very Ubisoft, right? Yeah. So, yep. Um, yep. you know, they're Ubisoft following for- formula. their formula that works, and they obviously create a lot of popular games. So, I expect it to be good uh, at the very least, um, you know, but Star Wars fans definitely have high expectations for their IP, so like they should. So we'll see. But one other quick thing that I want to call out that we talked about last week and we said we'd mention it is Hollow Knight Silk Song. The oh, that page yeah. was real. It was not an April Fool's joke. And yeah. one of the people actually were like, oh it just happened to go live today, but it's real. Um the, the troll yeah, yeah. Right. so it definitely <laughs> was meant to like it's smart by them. They got them all over the place, including these roundups. People are like, oh, like, it's so mean. And then they got, like, that second wave of people. Like, oh, it's actually real. So pretty smart PR. They just by went them. for the shark, shock value. Yeah, yeah, smart PR by uh, by that team over there to get, a, you know, some, a lot of love for it. And fans are excited. So Hollow Knight, it's coming. Very yeah, cool. I, know I never did a... beat the first one. I have to go through it again. Cause that, game, that game is hard. That game yeah. is really hard. And it's brutal. Uh, but it's really fun, so I have to go through and play it again. I have it on my yeah. Switch, and I want like the fifty thousand handhelds I have in the house that I we don't need another one. But uh, Xbox, and but that game is is just so good. Um, and I want to play this one, but I don't know if I can feel like I could buy it if I haven't beaten the first one. So. Yeah. yeah. But did you know that on the PlayStation Five that you can play in dual controller mode, uh, so that like. If you want to play with Naomi, she can be holding the controller and you can be using the other controller to actually 
do all the move sets, but she'll think she's playing. I didn't know this was a, this is an accessibility feature that they put into the PlayStation Five that I didn't know existed until recently. So I'm looking forward to actually trying with Arthur. I fucked around with it a little bit. I was like, oh shit, this is real. Like he we we can both play the same character at the same time with different controllers so that you can assist. But what what can he actually do? Oh. So he does everything, but you can override what he does? Yeah, basically. So like like I can play Spider-Man 2 with him and if he's like swinging and getting like stuck, I can like course correct him where he doesn't really, really? realize oh. that I'm actually helping him. Um so yeah, I didn't know wow. that was a thing. But so it's, it's like a, really a cool. help your yeah, help your kids kind of yeah, or help, that's whomever, really interesting. Right? So yeah, whoever, it's like yeah, a whoever. cool accessibility feature that they wow. created. So Not, I'm looking forward to trying it. Not only does that sound like a really cool accessibility feature, it sounds like a really hilarious Let's Play waiting to happen. Yeah. <laughs> I think that would be such a fun thing. If I, I don't know if we, we have to do it like in person or something like that, but that would be so much fun to just yeah. like, you know, like give each of us have a separate mission. Trying and, to do all the different you're things. Trying to, and you're like, okay, your job is to complete the side quest. Your job is to stop him from completing the side quest, <laughs> you know, or something like that. Like, I think that would be hilarious. Like, you just like drop kick somebody as as uh, Miles, and you're like, oh yeah. shit. <laughs> I can see that being awful because if you're like, okay, you're playing like Assassin's Creed or something, you have to do this mission with no kills, <laughs> and you're like, you have to kill everybody. Yeah, you have to kill someone. Yeah, <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, jeez. You just walk by somebody and stab them in the gut. You're like, no, no. <laughs> yeah, no, that'd be really funny. You have to like figure out like you get three interactions like where you can take over for a split second or five seconds, you know, and try to ruin right. whatever they're trying to accomplish. Yeah, but, you can uh, only press one button at a time or something. Yeah, yeah. Like... So it's something that's fair, right? So then you're just like, where drive off into like the ocean or whatever, you know, if you're in a racing game. So, yeah, that'd yeah, be fun. Uh, I think uh, I think we've got to do something like that. That is hilarious. I like that much better than the get drunk and try to explain a history of a game segment. I think we should still do that. Even I if we only too. do it for one episode, I think we should yeah. still do that. I think it would be hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. I think that's kind of it for me. You guys got anything else or should we move on? No. We got that's a couple of questions. We do, we do. Uh, but before we dive into that, I just want to say that we really appreciate everyone who follows and subscribes to us. We post new episodes every Tuesday morning on podcast services and YouTube. You can also find us on Instagram threads and YouTube at Pixelated Realms Podcast. Uh, if you want to ask us a question or leave a comment, you can now go to pixelatedrealms.org slash ask. Leave us a comment and we'll talk about it in the middle of our show. Uh, if you ask us a question or uh, a comment, we'll, we'll discuss it. And that's the segment we're about to drop into right now. And Join so Ralph and send in questions. <laughs> yeah, Greg, who I know is listening. Send in a goddamn Greg. question. Uh, actually, he just had a baby, not Miller. Uh, congratulations! Our he just had a baby a couple of days ago. Him and uh, our friend Megan. So congratulations to them. Big shout out. Um, yeah, very cool. Uh, I now have to ask him if I can announce that on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. not, that, not that I don't think he, uh, you know, I, I, just, I don't know. I don't know who he told. Um, so it might be a little bleep there. Yeah, but, check okay. the Instagram, see if it's on there yet. Yeah, I know. Um, all right. So not Ralph asked us a few questions. Uh, Dustin, what's your waifu week two pick? Oh, my goodness. This is going to become a thing. Uh, <laughs> wait, this isn't Ralph? It is Ralph. It is. Oh, it is just, Ralph. He just, it's not he, he, Ralph. He just wrote in as not Ralph. Oh, that's that's actually really funny because from what I just said about someone help Ralph, and then he said so his name is not Ralph. Not Ralph. Oh shit! I haven't even thought about it. Um, I guess we'll just go with more recent and have to just give some love to Tifa from Rebirth. Um, <laughs> You know, they obviously, it was really funny because we talked about this on the podcast, but I think that the developers actually were like, yeah, you know, we got so many people asking about Tifa being brought back to like her original design, that that's why we did this with Rebirth. So I don't know how true that is because again, I don't really play Final Fantasy, but I guess they nerfed her top and they unnerfed it for Rebirth. So I'm all about it. Um Fan service. Rebirth might be a game I have to pick up so I can just lay on the beach. Just yeah, quit just, the game there. 
Um, actually, it's funny because <laughs> a lot of people made that joke on Twitter after that. Like, I never got past the beach uh, part. So, <laughs> so. It's like a save file specifically at the beach yeah, part. Yeah, you're exactly. just on the beach the whole game. You're like, it was great. I beat the game. You're like, oh, how was the final boss? Like, I don't know. I just played on the beach. You're like, I mean, if you guys think that they're not going to release like a volleyball mini game or some oh shit that they could play God. after the game, like or, or even like a standalone game, you're going to see Final Fantasy VII Rebirth Volleyball Edition or that, whatever. Dead or Alive 2.0. Like, yeah, I was going to say yeah. Dead or Alive yeah. Final <laughs> Fantasy Edition. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't put it past them. It's like, you know, like we've talked about it and like, you know, as work in the industry, like the Japanese game studios have a reputation for not shying away from you know, sexualizing their characters <laughs> as we've seen. And although like Stellar Blade, I think is actually Korean developed, but you know, we see it with Stellar Blade, we see it with Tifa. I mean, we see it all with uh, 2B. I mean, it's everywhere. It's been happening forever. I don't think it's going to stop. And I, for one, don't want it to. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Cool. Any uh, others? Yes. Question number two. In last week's podcast, you guys mentioned the nerds won the war. When was the shift? What do you guys think changed where gaming and nerd culture became more acceptable in society? I actually think this is easy for me to answer. So I think what happened is our parents' generation, well, it was a, there was a stigma against it. Yeah. And then all of those parents grew up and stifled their nerdness. And then, but they had kids, and they projected <laughs> all that nerdness onto their kids. And our generation grew up like that. And because we grew up like that, nobody thought it was weird. Um, I think that is a factor. I don't think that's the only reason. I also think... I, yeah. Yeah, go for it. No, no, no. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I also think um, a little bit, and this is maybe a little tongue-in-cheek, but I think that some corporations figured out how to monetize people's passions. And so they made it cool through merch and TV and things like that. And I know that's a little dismissive uh, to some things because people are gonna be like no we fought really hard to be like you know to like have nerdum acceptable and i do think that's true i do think people did fight to make it more acceptable but i also think one of the reasons it's more in the zeitgeist is because it's now very easy to market um okay. you know it's it's easy to market you know a action figure for and tv shows and all these things um a little more so than maybe sports and other things um, and I think that has a big factor in it. Yeah, I mean, I'll piggyback off of what you said, because I, I think that's kind of where my direction was going. Um, you know, I, what you said about, like, the our generation growing up and just not, you know, thinking differently about it than the previous generation um, definitely is a big factor. But I, I think the biggest driving force is money, unfortunately. Um, you know, like would play would be playing football be the coolest thing in the world if the nfl and the super bowl didn't exist like it's it, i feel like there's a inherent uh the fact that like the the video game industry finally bloomed and investors maybe they're the last line of defense from making anything happen we're like wait there's money here let's throw money into it so as soon as twitch became a thing as soon as like let's plays became a money maker as soon as these things became like worldwide money makers to me that's when it was like well maybe it's not a bad idea to be into video gaming or something and that's where you know all sorts of people are attracted to money every person is attracted to money in some way so to me that's where it came from it was just a a cultural shift because it became a, a you you, be, you could become rich doing it kind of thing um to put it simply so i have a different take for you guys that i think you'll be all both be like, yeah, actually, that makes sense. I think that we've seen the shift where nerds became cool with the introduction of social media. So if you think about it, Facebook launched, or no, MySpace launched in 2003, right? So when I was about to graduate high school. Um, and I think that social media has helped propel video games into mainstream culture because it allowed us to start to see like what gamers looked like more often, like, he's, oh, this guy plays video games. He doesn't look like a nerd. Or he doesn't look like the mm -hmm. guy I thought they looked like. And on top of that, we also get to see, like, more, as you said, Alex, like, people who grew up with video games, like, celebrities and stuff like that, more access to, like, their daily life, what they're doing, mm -hmm. what their hobbies were, what they like. And you get to see these people who are like, oh, I like video games. I, yeah, fuck yeah, I play video games. 
you know? And so I think like with being able to have more access to people's interests on a regular basis and them to share what they like and don't like has allowed us to kind of change our perception. And then over the years now we've seen that grow where, you know, now it's like cool for girls, you know, thoughts or whatever to like dress up like, oh, look how nerdy I look, you know? And it's like a cutesy thing and or like, you know, like, yeah, you know, a phase clan for instance, was a built on this idea of like, we're what gamers look like. We're not fucking nerds, you know, like these like dorky nerds, like we're like bros, but we like to play COD and, you know, and like, obviously I fucking hate FaZe Clan, but um, they're, a bunch, they're a bunch of douchebags, but, um, but yeah, you know, like I said, more access to what people like through social media, I think has changed, helped really drive the change of perception about what a gamer looks like, what a gamer sounds like, what they, you know, and what their yeah. interests are. I think that's a really good point, and it, I think it's it's funny because it's still kind of a thing. Like, even – I mean, and gamers are, if not the most uh, guilty of this, where it's like, oh, yeah, this jerk who's talking crap about me in this game is probably some Chad, fat Chad who sits in his mom's basement. Like, we're just as Fucking guilty virgin. as anyone else. You're a virgin. Right. <laughs> and and the, the, the truth of the matter mm. is, is like you said, you know, like we get like all these stars who are Henry Cavill, blah, 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 you know, you name it, um, who are playing D&D &D and playing World of Warcraft and, and kind of making it socially acceptable to be a hot human who also does this. So yeah, I think, Mila yeah, Kunis was a huge WoW player. Sure. You know? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, there's a lot of them, right? Like, um... Uh, Vin Diesel's a big D and D player. Who's the Michelle Rodriguez is a WoW player. Like, like there's all these actors. They all play who... COD. Everybody plays yeah. COD. So, <laughs> um, yeah. And, and you know things with Twitch and YouTube. Like I said, like let's plays ways of like creating this interaction. Um, not only did the money drive it, but like you said, there's more exposure that's driving it. And nowadays, right, it's this tepid thing, right? It's like, it's not like, oh, he plays a video game. He's an immediate loser, right? And maybe that we just felt that harshness because we grew up in an age where it was kind of unfashionable to like video games. But luckily, things have changed. <laughs> yeah, I think gamers have overcome it. I do think esports players are still trying to overcome yeah. it you know you have people like colin cowherd who used to rep espn or fox and he's like if i ever have to cover esports i'll fucking quit i'm not gonna yeah. report on some nerds who play video games in their basement and you know it's just like this huge misconception that some people definitely still have mm -hmm. um and i think that more so ties to less of the casual gamer these days and more so to the people who play video games for a living um of like oh my god like how could you do that like you're playing video games for a living like 15 hours a day but so i think there's still a little bit of work for those folks to overcome some of the mm -hmm. negative you know thoughts about it or sentiments but i think the general gamer has come into a, a, a state where it's accepted socially although that being said i, I strongly want to just point out that like to me like physical sports and video game esports are very different Yes, they're both competitive scenes of things, but I'm sick of this idea of like that there's some like I'm not going to go ask the football announcer guy to report on Call of Duty. And, and to me, that's ridiculous. I don't want to go to ESPN to get my Call of Duty or uh, COD or, you know, COD, uh, uh, <laughs> my esports news. I don't need I want to go to a different source, an expert in that source. So what if it was like, an ESPN sub channel that was like ESPN? And there was. It was all esports I mean, and that's, reporters. That's their prerogative. That's fine. That's their prerogative. I don't care. But the fact that is like Joe Schmo or whatever, I don't know, announcers for football think they're, you know, think or are being asked to report on esports is a ridiculous notion. Right. Well, I don't think that's happening anyways. They get they're yeah. getting people who are in the industry, usually ex pro players, which is the same thing they do with sports. Yeah, it's like uh, casters or ex pros or <clears throat> people who are like expert analysts, people who really know the game, right? Like that's yeah. what they want. But it's more so that like, you know, ESPN hosted like a hots tournament or some shit on TV and like Cowherd was just like, I can't fucking believe ESPN has video games on here. If I ever have to do that, I'll kill myself. You know, old like, guy yelling at clouds. I, yeah, uh, I'm a you know. I'm a boomer, and I I'm trying to exactly. tell the world. You know, yeah. which is just like insane. Um, but yeah, yeah, I don't think anybody wants Joe Buck and Troy Aikman like commentating yeah. the fucking League of Legends World Championship. No. you know, no, <laughs> so, we want Snoop Dogg. <laughs> we, we, do, we do want Snoop Dogg because That's Snoop funny. is like hilarious at anything he does. So yeah, he's I, the best. 
All right. Well, we have a couple. We have one more question, and it's a two-parter. So, uh, split-screen games seem to be a thing of the past. Most games are now single-player, but require online access to play with friends. Seems like Nintendo is really the only one still making single-player, single-device multiplayer. Question one: Why do you think they're they've gone away from this model? And what are some of your favorite games that you've played split screen? Um, good, great question. Why do I think we've gone away from this model? Money. Um, I think it has to do with money. And I think it's not totally, I mean, it's not like, oh, you know, fuck split screen. It, it, it does exist. There's really fun split screen games. And um, if you haven't played it, it takes two. I highly recommend it. That's, Emily and I play that game all the time. An amazing uh, split screen co-op game. They're still out there. Um, but the thing is, I don't think they sell as well. And um, I don't, not only do I think they don't sell as well, um, not, well, it takes two is, is a, is a, um, it, is, isn't typical because that one's sold really great. But um, I also think that you're, it's much more difficult to get somebody into your house because not everybody's playing in their in the physical locations anymore than it would be to put an online version of that and then have you know you play online together um not only because there's benefits you know you get two tvs um then you sell twice as many consoles you sell twice as many games um and it's convenient for the user so i think there's just a lot of of conveniences that get rolled up into it and then when you make something online like that um it requires the game to kind of be online because of like they have to communicate with the servers for for whatever reasons and stuff like that. So there's there's all these like technical reasons why it's kind of shifted there as well. Yeah, updates of nothing else, right? Like we don't live in a mm-hmm. world anymore where a game comes out on a on a on a cartridge and that that's it. That's the game forever. Like, and we don't even I don't I don't even think any gamer wants that experience at this point. Like, mm-hmm. we outdated. want like games to be able to get updated, bugs to be fixed things like that to be able to take place, you know? So I don't think we're at a stage where we, we want, you know, an offline only cartridge experience. Um, I do wish that games didn't require to be online as much or like all the time, but I think it, I do agree that it, there's a money perspective or, you know, point there. But I also just think it's, it's what you also said, convenience. I mean, the way people absorb content now is much different than when we were kids yeah. where like people want the ease of being able to play in their own home, especially PC games, which is the most dominant form of gaming, right? In terms of player base, I'd imagine at least. Um, is it? At Craig I, Miller. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> I don't think that's I think correct. This... Mobile gaming is by far the oh, okay. highest. Well, I, not mobile, but, but next, I think consoles are even higher than PC. Go on. Well, either way, um, I just think there's so many people who like to play within the convenience of their room and of their own home, you know? And also like, remember as like kids, like, I mean, we used to all pile in like a bedroom if a kid had a TV, but mm-hmm. I mean like how many parents at this point want to like give up their living room for four hours as like the teenagers all come over and play call of duty in the living room on a split screen, you know? So. I mean, here's the thing. Split screen was built out of necessity and less because it worked really well. So yeah, like man, fucking mm-hmm. screen, you guys remember we were all we all had a small TV and we we're all huddling around it. You'd have a tiny little portion of that screen. So like like as far as optimization goes, thank you, Sophie. Uh, the split screen wasn't a great solution anyway. It was just a it was a solution to a problem. I think this was the natural progression and it naturally progressed like that even more because of the money situation. So I feel like there was mm-hmm. just no other option. Uh, it was just always going to be like this. Um, but then there, it, like you said, Alex, it depends on the type of game. Fighting games still have split screen, split screen, you know, they still have two player capability on one screen. Mm-hmm. Uh, take two does, you know? So I think it's just shooters specifically were like, this isn't working. Let's just stop and go th- with something that does work. And then other games that could, we're like, you know, we could still offer it if it's within the parameters. Of the game. Yeah. You looked at my screen. You cheated. You know. Yeah. Remember that? No yeah, more screen lookers. Screen. Yeah, no, no more screen, 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 screen lookers. Sniping. Um, so, I mean, the second half of that question for me, probably favorite experience on split screen is probably still Mario Kart. If not Mario mm-hmm. Kart, uh, Goldeneye. Uh, I was about to say Goldeneye is a blast. big one. 
But, yeah. um, but those two definitely stand out above the, any other split screen experience I can remember. Yeah. Um, snowboard kids, super fun. Had to oh <laughs> my god, you dropped snowboard kids? I love I, snowboard kids. I, I snowboard kids so I, good, dude. <laughs> I'm also really good at it. I, do, I, I have all the characters unlocked, or I did when I had that game, like also, Shinobin or whatever. Fucking killer soundtrack. Yeah. I still listen to it to this day. If you have not listened to the Snowboard Kids soundtrack, you're missing out. I mean, that that era had like really good soundtracks. For some reason, they got a lot of really good licensed music too. Like and so, like like Tony Hawk and stuff. For I was about to say you're thinking oh, of Tony yeah, Hawk Tony specifically. Yeah. Yeah. Have you guys seen that yeah. video that went viral? The guy created the thing about like I need you to create like a pause music, blah blah blah, uh, and yeah. then he does like the Golden Eye. Doesn't pause need music, to go too hard. Like, yeah, and it's just like a super banger. Bum, and like bum, you listen bum, to bum, it. Bum, yeah, bum, and it's like, bum, bum, it has bum, no business like, being as good as it is. <laughs> that guy has a whole series of those, and it's hilarious. Yeah, it's funny <laughs> because funny. he's like the original, but then there's a guy who did it like two years later and followed his format. Um, he always gets all these people commenting, like, oh, you stole this guy's fucking content. And it's like, actually, dude, mine's like multiple his. years yeah. earlier. <laughs> so it's pretty funny. everyone steals content that's just the deal <sighs> i'd have to yeah. say though my absolute favorite is is og halo combat evolved for me because i would go that was like i was like the prime age for that and i'd go over to my friend jake's house and we'd go and sit in his house and we were trying to ha hammer out the legendary campaign and we'd sit there and you would do the thing we're like all right this area is too tough so one of you go stand <laughs> in the back and just be a respawner and I'm going to go in and just suicide a thousand times until we finally yep. clear the area. Classic <laughs> you know? Halo legendary strategy. Yeah. Classic, like, <laughs> young kid strategy there. Yeah. Like, exactly. Oh, wow. All right. Did we want to move on to the main topic? I know we're running short on time here, as yeah, usual. let's do it. You want to you wanna start us off? Start with the question? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so um, we're, today we wanted to talk about a uh, big game series. You know, we got our Mario's Final Fantasies, uh, you know, you Mario's. name it, uh, <laughs> that we have played but have not finished for one reason or another. Um, I know mine is probably going to be Mar the Mario series because I've never beat a Mario game. I don't think like any of them like Odyssey sunshine galaxy um i mean 64, mario kart 64 mario kart mario maybe. party i don't know if you can count those as I being able to beat them so uh, paper, but, paper but, mario you, you had to have played i think you played paper mario I almost the original beat paper mario i never beat it though i don't think i've beat a single mario game i don't think oh. i don't think i have so i, gotta, I i'm so gonna have to think crazy. of one so okay, so I will I'll go first then. So Well I the thing is about that though is I actually think you're probably in the majority. Yeah. I think a lot of people yeah. are in your boat. Um So Mario specifically though, for me, okay, I'm not a big platformer fan, um, viewers. I'm I I'm just not. Like I've been playing platformers my whole life and honestly, like my favorite platformer is also a shooter, which is Mega Man X. Like so and I don't I don't even like I don't even know if you want to call that a pure platformer. So I love the Mario games. I think they're really enjoyable. Um, I think they're, I think it's beyond explanation for their effect on the video game world. However, I just mm -hmm. always burn out and I always teeter out like the first, like three or four levels to those games. I'll be like, yeah, this is great. This is great. And then I kind of look back at myself. And when I get to the harder things, I'm always like, but this is just like me trying to jump in a very specific place or just running around a map where I have no idea what's going on. Like to me, there's not a lot driving me to continue in a platformer. So I end up petering out really, really quickly. But like things like finding secret areas or finding fun solutions, like I, I still enjoy it. I just never it just never pulls me because my character usually is not progressing as significantly as like, I love RPGs. I like gear. I like loadouts, like things like that. So when the progression of a platformer is kind of like more slow and more skill dependent, um, that's really hard for me to like keep my attention. And then mm -hmm. I see these guys who are like really into like the Mario maker, Mario level maker. And like, they like spend hundreds of oh, hours yeah, mastering these levels. Like to me, I, I have like no interest in that. I don't, I'm just like, n I'm interested in watching you do it, but like the, the amount of repetition, repeating the same thing over and over again can be difficult for me. Um, so yeah, I just, I never do it. Although I, 
uh, my favorite ones would be Mario 64, uh, Mario Sunshine. Um, and I, I really enjoy them. I just never finished them. Underrated Mario, Mario 3D World. I played that on Wii U. I thought it was fucking fantastic. But for whatever reason, people don't rate it very highly. I don't know why. But Mario 64, definitely, like, one of the best, uh, without doubt. Have you guys ever watched yeah. the clip of people... Um, oh. Like beating bum, it bum, within like bum, two bum, minutes, bum, bum. like they yeah, do like they the, oh, yeah. back the reverse, yeah, yeah, and then they go kill Bowser like instantly. <laughs> that, like, oh. that, it's uh, really impressive. Actually, Mario sixty four has some of the coolest speed run videos uh, online. There's like, uh, if you go into the ones that go into detail about like how they do it mathematically, it's very interesting. Like for instance, <laughs> I guess there's like an area where um, I'll go. I'll be quick about this, but there's an area where, like, if you slide down this hill, you can get stuck in the slide animation, which will continuously add acceleration to your character. And then I guess the game like tiles the the map, so you it like infinitely tiles the map, and so you can like jump across all these tiles to get to another area, uh, to get to a like a basically an alternate universe version of the map that has no enemies on it, and so you can just like run around and and do it. Anyways, it's very cool, very interesting. But that is a classic. And I am surprised you haven't beat at least one, like Paper Mario or something. But, but and, and I love turn based, so Paper Mario was definitely the one I had a good chance at, but I still don't think I ever beat it. Yeah. Um mine probably will surprise you, I think, a little bit. Um I have almost two hundred hours in Skyrim. Never beat the main story. I've already given you crap for this in the past. <laughs> yeah, never beaten it. I also haven't beaten Red Dead Redemption too, and I probably have like fifty hours in that game. Um, you know the thing about uh, uh it, okay wait could continue continue i i mean like skyrim i think is pretty easy to see why i i just get so like the side quest tax is real you get you, know? you get side quest distracted yeah yeah exactly i'm like ooh, i could go do this Ooh, i could go do that oh why would i do the main quest when i have fifty thousand other things that i want to do oh there's this rebellion or civil war going on i don't really give a shit you know who wins? I will like, say Skyrim. I I remember I beelined it the last time when I did beat it. I was just like, I'm gonna beeline the story, and I did that. And one, it's actually a really like th- interesting story. Um, and two, it's not hard or long. So it's mm-hmm. just funny that you say that because I'm like, you could have probably done it really quickly, but it's like, yeah, it just ahead. doesn't seem like a priority in the game. Uh- do we have to start over? Oh, shit. Here we go again. You know, yeah. like... <sighs> How about you, Dustin? What's your series that you've played a lot of but never beat? Well, never even played a lot of it. But it's definitely Final Fantasy. Um, <laughs> you know, for one, growing up, not a PlayStation guy. was a Nintendo guy. Transitioned into PC almost, in, like, around, like, tw- 10 years old. And then, like, never really looked back at console for a, a long time. Um, you know, I have a PlayStation 5 now, and I had an Xbox for a bit. But, um, yeah, I mean, like, I just never got around to really getting into Final Fantasy. I remember playing the really, really old one on Nintendo, where, like, you're on, like, a ship. Six. And um, You're on a ship in every single one at some point. Okay, so, well, uh, it's Are a you thinking Final ship. Fantasy 6? Probably. Is that it's the one with the intro with the mechs and it's still pixel and way too deep. But <laughs> all I literally <laughs> remember about this game is walking on a fucking flying ship and like really old like OG Nintendo art. Um, so That's yeah, funny. but uh, but yeah, you know, I played that one a little bit and then I played like a little bit of sixteen maybe. Okay, wait, wait, wait. So maybe a sixteen. We're close enough in age like final fantasy six seven eight and nine would have been premium when you were a teenager i was also a proud fuck final fantasy zelda's so the greatest you franchise were ever a hater i was a hater you were a hater i was a that hater is why you have robbed yourself of one of the greatest video game franchises alex of left all time accident. alex <laughs> left because he was so outraged yeah he was fucking pissed he just was like fuck this guy <laughs> how <laughs> dare you <laughs> Um, um, yeah, I know. It was honestly because I was such a big Zelda fan, and there's all the debate back then was like, what is the greatest franchise ever? Is it Zelda? Is it Final Fantasy? And I was like, fucking Zelda, baby. Fuck you, Final Fantasy. So, yeah, that hater or juice. Or you could love both. 
I could have, but, you know, as a competitive minded child, I opted to pick a side uh, for democracy. Uh, honestly, you know? but, but, <laughs> for democracy. But the best thing about Final Fantasy games was like, especially as a child, like, so I obviously, um, I had Alex, who was three years older than me, playing these games, right? So, like, when I was a little kid, I was the the little brother watching because I just didn't have, like, the literal uh, intelligence to, like, get through these these games. Um, and then we have an uncle who is just a little bit older than us, uh, and he was the one who introduced us to these games. I hope you're watching, Uncle Patrick. Um, so he really introduced us to the Final Fantasy games and a lot of games. And so I spent like my young childhood trying to like beat the first level on most of them, you know, like that was like for me, it was like, I remember like sitting in, in his room or sitting at home and, and like, I was lucky if I got like 45 minutes into the game, but it would take me like six hours, you know, <laughs> like, mm. and so like as an adult, then what I do, what I do now is like, I'm like, well, when I was 10, I couldn't beat Final Fantasy VII, so now I'm going to go beat the shit out of it. And I'll go play like 100 hours and 100% it just to prove to myself that I have intellectual capability to beat this game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, uh, uh, the, you know, the JRPG turn based style is definitely for some people and, and not for others. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, whether or not you were going to be a Final Fantasy fan in the get go or not, um, you know, maybe you just aren't into the turn based. So um, the nice thing, though, is that Final Fantasy games won. I mean, they do change every game. So if you don't like the style or combat system of one, there is going to be tuning happening um, or adjustments with the next one. Um, obviously, that's changed over a 20, 30 year span of time. But um, yeah, it's it's funny because there is a lot of people who also think like, Final Fantasy, there's so many of them. I, I don't know where to start. I don't know how to start, where to pick up. And I I think a lot of people don't know that they are essentially independent games, all of them. Yeah. You know, so you don't, where you start is where you, you know, anywhere. You could start with any of the games. Um, yeah. So, you know, that's that's a common hurdle I think people create too. Yeah. Yeah, they have like similar themes across the games, but they're like completely different worlds. It's like a new season of, of you know what's the show that like restarts every season but something like that well it's like they have fundamental ideas and this is this is actually yeah i'm muted i was just saying i I had no idea that was a thing i thought that like cloud was in like every final fantasy no they were just the characters different set of characters every single game i didn't know that until 15 again because i hardly paid attention um when we were, I was actually at the launch event in LA because my agency at the time was working on Square. Oh, they still do. But um, I was like, oh, what the fuck? Where's like Cloud and Tifa? And so it doesn't surprise me that they relaunched Seven because I feel like without a doubt that those are yeah. probably the most iconic characters. 100%. So it's like, how can we continue to get more Final Fantasy Seven merch and game stuff out there? Yeah. So, yeah, this dives into the Final Fantasy conversation a little bit. So Final Fantasy VII, I would say, almost undoubtedly is the most popular Final Fantasy game. It's not, no, Alex, it's, it's, it is, I would say, by and large, the most people in the world know about Final Fantasy VII. Like, it when gets it talked about the, the most. Yes, it gets the most attention. A lot of people are passionate about being their favorite. Um, I think most people who played all of the Final Fantasies, I think most of them tend not to like focus on seven. I certainly don't. I mean, nine and ten and thirteen and six, like tactics. There, like to me, there's a whole bunch that stand out. Other than before I get to seven, um, but yes, I would say popularity wise, Cloud is probably the most recognizable Final Fantasy figure. He is mm-hmm. only in Final Fantasy seven, and of course the remakes. So it it's um. It, you know, and to me, I, even when I was younger, I didn't like the more I, I preferred the more like medieval setting to the industrialized setting. So Final Fantasy nine, which has a less industrial, more medieval setting, was more interesting to me for that reason. Um, so there's a little bit of every, you know, there's a little bit of uh, everything in Final Fantasy. You just have to know which game to play. Mm-hmm. Final Fantasy nine is the best. Final Fantasy nine is is the best one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's just a fact if not uh, 10 yeah but i mean i'm not i am a little surprised that uh 
just given that you kind of like JRPGs and stuff like that, um, I would be surprised if you picked up the new... I, I know that the pixelated stuff, you know, isn't as waifu friendly, but uh, the new the new Final Fantasy certainly are. So, I, you know, I'm surprised you haven't picked up Rebirth. I mean, haven't you? You're muted. Did you play 15? Did muted. you say... Uh, oh, sorry. Re- no, no, no I, didn't, I didn't play it. I didn't play it, but I watched like the... It's the one that had like the movie come out alongside it, right? Yeah, like an anime. Like, uh, well, and there's a the few first thing you do is you interact with Cindy, I think her name is, and she's just like grossly over sexualized character in the. She is the like, mechanic. Is she the she's mechanic? She's the mechanic chick. Yeah, and, and it's like like you can see her underwear like showing. Like it's like grossly over sexualized. And she's like so stereotypical, like woman mechanic. Like right, she's hey, just like lady, a mechanic. You know, I'm like, a girl who's really hot, but I'm also act like a man. I, I'm also a great mechanic because my daddy's a mechanic. Yeah, it's yeah. It was, and like I'm not complaining. I thought she was a fine character. I just it was just like really funny, like a very very Cindy Arum. Yeah, 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 Arum. She in yellow and and yeah and short jeans, short jeans, was tracker hat. Yep, fucking right. awful game. And I'm sorry if that was your no, first entry not. into it the game. No, it's not. It is not an awful game. Fucking awful story. It is not. You are remembering incorrectly. There's things that are not as amazing about it i think but it is you're not remembering it correctly hey, i have played it three I'm times prince. i'm a prince and my father and the entire capital just got fucking nuked from space but we're but on a bachelor i'm party. going on a road trip with my friends also every time that i meet somebody they know that i'm the prince but they still treat, treat me, me like, like i'm a shit. fucking child <laughs> yeah like, honestly it is so funny though oh like there is certain God. things in that game that are really <laughs> silly like you're literally Prince Noctis, and like people are like, "Oh, Prince Noctis." Hey, can you do well, me a favor? Well, it's extra money. Yeah, can you do me a? Can you go get my groceries? <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. people treat you like you're garbage in that game. Yeah, um, it, but, it, but there's certain aspects of that game, and we'll we'll save it for another episode. But like, there's certain aspects of that game I think completely revolutionized certain aspects of JRPGs. So uh-huh. like, like when, the food, the food and <laughs> camping stuff. And, like, the way the traveling system worked out actually worked perfectly for me. Um, and I think Breath of the Wild would not have been the game it was without the inspiration of Final Fantasy XV. Wow. That's bold, a hot take. But I think statement. I Flip that. I'm, I'm, I, I think it's... I think I could support it, but we'll, we'll save it for another time. <laughs> okay. Cool. Well, I think unless you guys got anything else to say i think that's a good place to wrap it up for us then thank you guys for the great discussion and thank you everybody for listening don't forget to follow or subscribe to us be notified when we post new episodes post new episodes every tuesday morning on podcast services and youtube you can also find us on instagram threads and youtube at pixelated realms thank you very much great thanks see you guys bye